Hi guys, it's the Plantaholic here. Hope you're all keeping well. Hope you're also enjoying the sunshine and out and about in your garden. Uh, I certainly have been uh, propagating and uh, planting a lot in the garden. Uh, today I'll be showing you how to sow a lot of uh, colourful annuals for the summertime, such as zinnias, tifonias, and I'll also be showing you how to propagate some more unusual seeds that I've had. Uh, recently through the post so I'm really excited I'll be uh, propagating them in my heated propagator in the uh, shed uh, and I'll show you my setup that I have in there to do so um, so yeah so keep watching and uh, if you like what you see then please uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel cheers Hi everyone, this is the Plantaholic. Uh, I'm going to be sowing some Zinnia and Tifonia seeds today. Both are gorgeous annuals which add a riot of colour uh, for the summertime in amongst all the other greenery. Uh, both are from Mexico so they both need quite a bit of heat. So I'll be, add, I'll be sowing them in my heated propagator uh, set at 25 degrees or 77 Fahrenheit. Um, I particularly love uh, the purple prints Zinnia. Uh, I'll also be sowing the green uh, Envy and uh, I love that orangey red of the Tifonia uh, Red Torch. So over here I've got some uh, pots uh, prepared. So I've got some multi-purpose compost. I'll fill the pot up to the top uh, level and then to firm it down to level it off I've just used a, another pot to actually do so um, to actually firm it down. And it's the same with square pots, um, you know, obviously they'll fit into one another and uh, to firm it down. Um, I'll then actually sow them uh, in, in individual pots because zinnias absolutely hate root, dis root disturbance. So it's better to sow them directly in cells or small pots such as these. Um, let them root through the bottom of the pot for four to six weeks uh, before planting them outside when the risk of frost has passed. Today is the 24th of April. Um, I've actually sowed zinnias on the 1st of May and been able to plant them outside by the end of May so they grow very, very quickly. But like I say, they do hate root disturbance so it's better not to put them in seed trays and then transplant them or prick them out. It's better to sow directly into the actual pots. So once you've actually um, got your pot prepared, then just put a seed or two per pot and then just cover them with a little bit of fine sieved compost just enough to cover them really there's a general rule for seed sowing whatever the depth of the seed the diameter of the seed you try to cover with the same again um, so that's a good rule to remember you get a high germination rate if you remember that rule um, after sowing them uh, I'm going to put them in just a tray of water to actually uptake the water for a, you know 10 minutes or so, soak it from beneath um, and that way you don't have to worry about the seeds being washed away. Like I say then after that I'm going to be putting them into my heated propagator which is from Garden Angels, uh, it's got grow lights on there as well, it means I can propagate stuff all year round in my shed. Okay, so what, I'm going, what I've actually done here now, I've got the zinnia seeds, I've placed two per pot. Um, what I can do, I can always thin those out so when the seedlings germinate, I can actually weed out the weakest uh, of the two. Uh, I said earlier that I, you can actually cover with compost. Another way of actually planting these seeds, uh, which uh, a bit quicker than actually cover them with compost, is you can actually just insert the seeds like so. Just push them down on the sides and that's a much quicker way of doing it. Uh, always put a label in there so I'm, I've got a label here with uh, done in pencil so you can see I've got today's date on there and the full name. Always put the date on uh, the label because when they germinate the first thing you want to know is how long have they taken to germinate uh, I always write in pencil uh, it just pencil doesn't get uh, broken down by UV light of the Sun like marker pens do 
but equally once you've finished with the labels you can actually use a rubber to rub, the, rub it off and reuse uh, the plastic labels which is also good um, so once I've done these I'm going to give them a soak for 10 minutes in water from the base and then pop them in the propagator okay cheers guys happy propagating and see you soon bye Hi guys, it's just an update on the zinnia seedlings. These were sown three days ago and as you can see they're already germinating. So have fun, bye. Hi again, I just thought I'd do another update on the zinnia and tithonia seeds that I sowed on the 24th of April. It's now the 5th of May. They've done really really well as you can see. Uh, I've took them out of my heated yeah. propagator now and put them in my uh, conservatory because I need the space now to uh, propagate more seeds in there but also it's to obviously acclimatise them and to give them more light as well uh, so uh, as you can see they're getting a little bit spindly so I did actually take them out and give them some more light in my conservatory now and uh, if they start to tilt to one side I'll just keep turning the pots between 90 degrees and 180 degrees turns to make sure that they're growing nice and straight. So you can see these are the Tifonia ones now. Um, so you can see the uh, the broad, the two, the first uh, pair of leaves, the cotyledons or seed leaves, are more rounded, uh, whereas the adult leaves there have got uh, more characteristic oval-shaped leaves with the pointy tip, and that's more characteristic to the adult leaves. Um, so here are the zinnia seedlings and again you can see the cotyledons, uh, the rounded ones and then you can see the true leaves, the adult leaves are just starting to develop there in the, uh, in the centre. Um, so I won't be planting these outside until the end of May when the risk of frost has passed um, but they are real good uh, doers. Uh, and had a lovely splash of colour in amongst all my greenery. Uh, if you like what you see, please be sure to subscribe to my channel uh, and hope to see you all again soon. Cheers, take care, thank you, bye. Okay, so now that I've uh, moved the zinnias and tithonia out of the propagator, it's freed up some space for some more seed sowing. Uh, so I've recently got these seeds from Jungle Seeds online and uh, they were delivered yesterday but as you can see I haven't put them straight into uh, compost in the propagator I've actually pre-soaked them uh, so I've followed the instructions on their packet um, and also using my own experience over the years that I've been in horticulture I've learned how to um, propagate them successfully um, so I know sort of what sort of general techniques to use for optimal germination. So what I've got here, I've got them soaking in a mixture of some uh, orange juice diluted down with um, some uh, warm water. And uh, some of them need soaking for 24 hours, some need uh, 48 hours. And the reason that you soak them for is to soften the, the hard seed coat to make sure that the water can actually get into the seed embryo to encourage germination. Otherwise, if you plant the seeds without pre-soaking, they might find it difficult to soak up the water, might not ever germinate. The other reason for pre-soaking them is to wash away or remove in, uh, natural inhibitants, which are natural chemicals in the seed, which... Um, stop it from germinating until the correct conditions prevail. So by actually soaking them in this mixture, uh, it will actually wash that away, all those inhibitants away, and then they'll uh, germinate readily. So first of all, I'll just show you a few of the seeds that need 24 hours soaking. Um, these aren't as hard as obviously the 48 hour soaking ones. So I've got three types of Ipomias. Ipomias are morning glories, uh, so they're climbers with trumpet flowers, and they're called morning glory because they're often open in the evening and overnight or early in the morning, uh, and then they close up in the day. 
in the heat of the day. Um, so I've got a, a red flowered one here called Scarlet O'Hara. So I've just soaked that for 24 hours. Beautiful climate. I haven't grown it before. This is a new one for me. Uh, I've heard about it, but I've never grown it before. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this grows in my garden this year. The second one, Ipomia palmata. Palmata means uh, palm-like, uh, like a, a hand. Uh, and this is uh, obviously palm-like foliage. It's a climber again, and it has purple flowers. And again, I've heard of this before, but never grown it. So I'm really excited to grow it for the first time. The third Ipomia I've got is Ipomia carnea. Carnea it means fresh-coloured uh, or pink. And uh, I've grown this one before uh, in my horticultural job. And uh, it's more shrubby. It's not a climber, but it's not uh, well grown in the UK. It normally needs quite tropical conditions, but I thought I'd give it a go. If it don't like being outside, I'll try it in my conservatory over the summer. But I do love to experiment to see which tropical plants like to grow outside in the UK climate for the summer and which ones don't. Uh, but this one is beautiful, really, really pale pink uh, flowers with a darker pink eye. Absolutely gorgeous. So after the Ipomias, I've got a, a Hedicium or Hedicium, however you want to pronounce it. This one's Deceptum. And it's a re uh, so these are ginger lilies. They're all relatives of the ginger. And uh, as far as I know, you, uh, you can't eat them. They're just for the ornamental flowers. And this one, Deceptum, has got red flowers. It's quite new to cultivation in the UK. Uh, so again, I've heard of it, but I've never grown it. So again, really looking forward to growing this one for the first time. Uh, next, I've got a shrub, Cesalpinia porcherima, or porcarima. Uh, you can get this in red, orange, or yellow. I've gone for the red one. It often has orange and yellow tints in it anyway. And I've grown this before uh, in my job. Uh, professional job and it's absolutely gorgeous but I'd love to have some plants for home uh, again it's tender I'll have to bring it in in the winter time but I'm hoping that against my safe facing wall in the summertime it can get a good baking and it'll have a uh, glorious flamboyant sort of red flowers with really long stamens like uh, eyelashes so really looking forward to that Moving on next is uh, to my two muses that I've bought. Uh, muses now no normally need 48 hours of soaking because they do have really, really tough seed coats. So I'm going to leave these for an extra day. Uh, all of these have been soaked for 24 hours so far. Uh, so this one's Sycamensis Darge Giant. Uh, I have Sycamensis, which is uh, similar to uh, Japanese banana Musa Bajju. Similar hardiness. Um, but Sycamensis, they say, don't suffer from the leaf damage that Bajju normally has. Uh, I have a Sycamensis, but I don't have the Darge Giant, so it'd be interesting to see just how much bigger this one gets. So again, I've heard of it, but never grown it before. Moving on, I've got a Musa Helens Hybrid. It's a, a cultivar between two species, and this is supposed to be fairly cool toler tolerant. And it will actually produce edible bananas. Uh, so again, I've heard of it, but I've never grown it. So I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, next, then, I've got Delonyx regia, which is a stunning flamboyant tree. One of my favourite trees of all. I've seen it grown as a street tree in uh, Gran Canaria, in the Canary Islands. Uh, and it has fantastic, bright, brilliant red flowers. Uh, the with five sort of petals, the top petal being flecked with white and yellow, and it's absolutely incredible. It has fern like foliage, and I just thought I'd, uh, I'd give it a, an experiment really, see whether I can get it to flower when it's younger um, by probably giving it a cool uh, but frost free, dark winter uh, by in, in my utility room, which is frost free. Uh, and then keeping it dark by putting a cardboard box over it and then bring it back out in the spring feeding it well and giving it lots of light and water and just see really whether that sort of cardboard box method as it's called will actually um, encourage flowers on, on it uh, at a relatively young um, age and a, uh, a smallish height so 
Um, I'll be sewing all those today because I did soak all of those, like I say, yesterday. So all the 20, so, so the 24 hour ones I'll be soaking today, sorry. And the 48 hour banana soaking ones I'll be sewing tomorrow. So I'll be putting those, I'll be following those um, instruction pack, uh, instructions on the seed packet and then uh, putting them in my heated propagator. Probably at around 30 degrees centigrade um, during the day. Um, probably put it on a timer uh, so that it switches on for 12 hours um, at 30 degrees with the grow lights on. And then turn it off on the timer for 12 hours dark and no heat um, because with the bananas or musa they do like to have an alternating temperature to break the dormancy so I'll probably do that uh, finally today I had uh, a lovely plant uh, or seeds come in the post many hot grey on me I got it from eBay and there's six seeds in there they look a little bit like ricinus or castor oil seeds actually but smaller and they only came today, so I'm, uh, I'm going to soak those for 24 hours before sowing those tomorrow. And this is the hardy uh, tapioca, so Manihotis tapioca, or cassava. And this is, has absolutely stunning foliage. Uh, it looks like it's being uh, cut out, a bit like a, uh, a Christmas decoration, cut out of paper or cardboard. You know, when you fold paper up and then cut some uh, notches out and then unfold it it looks a little bit like that anyway so do google it and uh, uh, I did have a week plant of that uh, a year or two ago but unfortunately lost it so I've managed to get hold of some seeds and I'm gonna I'm hoping that these will perform better they're looking really really good and healthy the seeds look really plump and viable uh, so yeah we're looking forward to sowing these shortly so happy propagating guys and don't forget if you like what you see please subscribe to my channel. Bye.